what he'd think of the children. The Emperor's children. That's right, folks, we've got a fairly fun one this week for you. We're going to be looking at the Emperor's Children. Now, I don't know whether you'll have been following the uh, My Big Fat Mouth vodcast or not. If you haven't, you definitely should check it out. It's pretty cool. But I've been talking on there about some studio armies. These are sort of 2,000-point armies that I'm putting together, and the idea is for other people to be able to come around, and we can meet up and play, and they can get a sort of representative idea of what other factions play like. So it came to decide in the next two armies to start thinking about. I won't spoil the other one in case you haven't watched the latest My Big Fat Mouth, but one of them we decided was the Emperor's Children. Now this is a really fun opportunity for me to paint something that isn't, you know, drab, natural or realistic colours. It's an opportunity to go for some really, really bright pink. So let's get down to down cam and I'll show you what I came up with for a little test scheme. Okay, let's start out with a surprise then. We've got a white primed miniature here. You used to see me priming black, but not for this one, because we are going to be doing a bunch of basing in a pink that is not the highest coverage. It is Thuvian Sun Orchid. I love, love, love the colour of this pink, but it is not the best coverage, so I decided to attack it with about three coats in the airbrush over a white primer. If you were hand brushing it on, you probably just to the natural sort of slightly thicker nature of hand brushing, you'd find that two coats would do. But as you can see, it does end up so worth it. Look how bright it is. It's beautiful. Next I'm going to grab some Lamian Medium and Karaberg Crimson and I'm going to mix these together in a little separate pot. I like to keep these mixed when I'm when I'm thinning washes and that kind of thing. I like to do it in a little pot like this just so that I can kind of control it a bit better. And this is going to be an all over but we do need to be careful here not to uh, not to stain any flat panels too much because our base co colour is not the best coverage in the world. We don't want to be trying to uh, sort of flatten out a bunch of flat panel staining. So just watch that. Just be careful with that wash. Keep it under control, and you'll end up with that. You, you know, you know what I'm going to say. Grab a black, any black, pick one. Any black will do. This is my favourite. Your favourite might not be and just start blacking in anything that's going to be metal, anything that's going to be black, get it all blacked in, which actually for this colour scheme is most of it. This is a very, very reduced palette colour scheme. As you can see, we've now got all that black in, and that sort of tells us a story of what we're shooting for. Okay, I want to start highlighting, first of all, with Empress Children and Thuvian Sun Orchid mixed together. Uh, that said, we are going to go quite a bit brighter than this, but I want to use my textural highlighting process, just because it's very fast, and this being a test scheme, you know, I kind of want to get an idea of what the battle ready is going to be like, more so than the miniatures that I'm going to spend ages working on. So we're getting up to, like, pure Emperor's Children now, and you can see it's starting to give us a nice highlight. It's looking pretty smart. I do want to push it a bit more than that, though. So I'm just going to start to bring some white into the mix. You'll see now, continuing with the textural highlighting, this is going to very quickly make a huge difference. First of all, this is just white mixed into the previous colour. And uh, as you can see, just catching all of these little edges here. And again, we're still doing our textural highlighting. So it's still a bit sort of choppy and scratchy, but it looks rad once you've got it on the entire miniature. Okay, next up, I'm just going to quickly get the metals in with uh, Viejo Dark Aluminium. Again, this is not something that will be new to you if you're a regular here on the channel. It's kind of my go-to metallic, but I just really like how it looks. Okay, and that's all the metallics in now. That's what they're going to look like. Now, I think next for those, a quick lick of Nuln Oil. And the, one of the really nice things about this Viejo uh, Dark Aluminium is that when you shade it with Nuln Oil, it doesn't really need to be re-highlighted. It's so bright. The edges kind of pop for themselves. You can sometimes kiss a couple of edges just to bring them back a bit. But for the most part, looks pretty great. Now we're going to get into starting to highlight all those blacks now. There was no uh, shot of my hand holding the paints here because I am just doing textural highlighting with my black of choice and the white that I'd already started to introduce earlier. So no new colours coming in at this point, but just a good build up of textural grey highlights on all of those black areas. Really, really straightforward. 
getting all the way up to a nice bright grey. Lots of texture, no real neatness required. And then we're going to get the eyes and the plasma glow done. So this is Boreal Green from Scale 75 and Alien Goo from Reaper MSP. Get those eyes in, there we go. And I'm starting to build up this plasma glow. This is one of the lengthiest parts of the video, actually, just because it's a lot of subtle blends. What you're basically trying to do is imagine the center of the coil as the hottest part, and the colors just want to keep getting brighter as they get closer to that hottest part. But what you want to try to do to get nice looking plasma coils, in my opinion, is make sure that the raised ridges of the plasma coil aren't highlighted. You actually want to be highlighting between the raised ridges. And that makes the glow look like it's coming from inside the coil, which I think is way cooler. There we go, getting all the way up to white. Look at that. So bright. Now, that's what we've got at this stage. This is basically done, but I'm just going to show you one last thing before the Lazy Susan. So I'll give you a quick look over, and then I'm just going to quickly show you some sponge chipping. Lovely, lovely sponge chipping. And then I'm going to shut up and we're going to go to a reveal. And you can see our finished miniature in all its glory. So there it is, a bit of a swervy kind of take on Emperor's Children using a really, really super bright pink. Now I will be honest, that Thuvian Sun Orchard does not have the best coverage in the world. So when it comes to actually doing the entire army, I'm probably going to go for one of the GW pinks. I'm thinking probably pink horror. And the only reason I'll really be making that change is just for a practicality. I still think if I was doing the odd character or a miniature who I didn't mind standing out, didn't mind having different looking armor to the rest of the army maybe something like that that Thuvian Sun Orchard would be a really really good option because it is so bubblegummy bright anyway folks I hope you liked that test scheme and it maybe gave you a little bit of inspiration for your own Emperor's children if you uh, like the video then of course do remember to hit the like button to let me know that you liked it that's very nice you could also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more that's a great way to to stay in touch and up to date on what I'm doing lastly of course if you do wish to support me help keep the lights on help keep me making these videos then you can pledge on patreon uh, we have tiers starting from as little as a dollar a month and you can get yourself started there with some lovely lovely rewards so as always thank you for your time thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one